Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is, of course, going into the drama and the recent events from the United Kingdom, Harry and Meghan, and of course, Queen Elizabeth and uh, their response to the interview and the allegations that have been made in an interview between, of course, Harry and Meghan and Oprah Winfrey. Um, I'm going to quickly share, of course, I, I said earlier that the response from Queen Elizabeth and from the um, British royal family seems like a would settle all the matters at home. You know, everybody mm -hmm. should mind their business. Um, and it quickly, it says, the whole family is saddened to learn the full extent of how challenging the last few years have been for Harry and Meghan. Um, the issues raised, particularly that of race, are concerning. While some recollections may vary, they are taken very seriously and would be addressed by the family privately. Mm -hmm. Um, Harry, Meghan and Archie will always be much-loved uh, family members. Uh, we've um, been joined this morning by Mr. Ladipo Johnson, a public affairs analyst, to share his thoughts on this trending issue. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good, Good to morning. have you. Thanks for Thanks having for joining me. Us. Good morning. All right, so let's, let's first of all start with your, um, your thoughts on all that has played out um, in the last few years, even you know, prior to their marriage, eventually when they got married, their first child, Archie, and, and the... Um, allegations of British media being completely racist, mostly towards Meghan um, and their marriage. Well, I think, um, generally speaking, it's um, poor management by the um, royal family. Um, just before the um, marriage, during the marriage, and just after, it became clear that for one reason or the other, um, Megan had bad press, as it were, constantly. Um, Harry was much loved. Um, he was in the military and what have you. But I think um, he then decided um, that he had to protect his wife. And later on, of course, his family, his son as well. Um, and you will recall that um, they had cases in courts against some of the tabloids yes. and what have you. Now, the royal family, unfortunately, in its usual, very conservative way, tried not to get involved. Um, the stiff upper lip, as we call it, the British stiff upper lip, uh, they kept quiet. And it is obvious now that, um, depending on what you, which side you belong, of the argument, um, the... Sussexes needed help, extra help from the establishment. They, they needed extra protection from the, from the royal establishment, which they didn't get. Now, when you juxtapose that, what um, William and Kate um, had, uh, well, they didn't have so much, they didn't have bad press and um, I think Meghan and Harry probably felt that they had more protection. Uh, then you can begin to see why I say that the whole process wasn't managed. I don't think it ought to have gotten to this point at all. Even if they had decided that um, they were going to re um, withdraw yes. as um, senior royals, working royals. Um, it didn't need to get to this stage, but it's gotten to this stage. And as you said, as you just read the, um, from the from Buckingham Palace, the press release, it's now um, sort of damage control because there are wide ramifications, and that is what the establishment will be thinking of now, um, not just um, Harry and Meghan. The, the the wider ramification is that the royal family itself is almost at, um, we're not wishing the queen, I mean, yeah, yeah, almost at a stage, uh, a state, stage where it's going to be, um, uh, the, the idea of the monarchy will be considered by various countries again within the Commonwealth and you have people like the um, immediate past um, Prime Minister of Australia and everybody saying, look, it's time again we consider having a republic. Uh, Canada is there, New Zealand is there, there are many places yeah. where the British monarch is still the head of state. So this is um, bad timing. It's not good for the royal family and that's why I said they didn't manage it 
properly. All right, during that interview that Harry and Meghan had with Oprah over the weekend, Meghan said she was silenced by the royal family mm. and that she was denied help when she was going through a mental health crisis. Mm. When you talk about mental health, you know that for some clients, they react in much more you know, welcoming ways. They want to help you, especially for a country like Britain and the royal family that prides itself in diversity in the workplace. You know, so it was different for Meghan, so it seems. So what forces do you think were at play with her? Well, um, she, you see, there again, um, maybe she wasn't properly prepared for what, much like Princess Diana, uh, would have been a mother-in-law. Um, the royal family is such, the queen had cousins that, uh, I don't know the medical term now, where, uh, I don't know, I don't want to use a term that is derogatory, but they, they were sick from birth, you know, almost like mongloid or whatever. And um, they kept them in homes. They hid them. Because in those days, they couldn't afford to have the public see that the royal family had weaknesses or had um, deficiencies in the DNA, as it were. That's the proper way to put it. And so they made that mistake with Meghan. If she had actually reached out to the establishment that, look, I'm going crazy here. I'm fed up. This is not what I thought it would be. I um, want my freedom, I want this and that. They really should have given her help if they had learned their lesson from Diana. Yeah, but why, why do you think they, they couldn't give the help? That's what I'm uh, saying. Uh, They're so stuck in that um, we must, there's this facade, we must um, protect, our, protect image. our image. It's so, all about image. So, so how, how much, you know, did, why do you think they saw Meghan as um, a flaw in their image? Well, um, it's when she said that um, there was some form of racism, uh, and Harry said that as well, then surely something must have been there. We saw all the bad press as well. Uh, it's always all right. Now, let's come back home. It's always all right to say, oh, yes, um, my child can marry anyone, this and that. But we all know that, unfortunately, a lot of us have prejudices. A lot of us have prejudices. You say, ah, you're marrying a Yoruba boy. You're marrying an Igbo girl. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? We have prejudice, prejudices, Let, uh, not to talk of, um, apart from the tribal, we have the religious one as well. Uh, is he a Christian? Is he a Muslim? And everything. So we all have these prejudices. So um, it shouldn't come as a surprise that some very conservative people within that establishment would be like, oh, you're marrying um, a mixed race woman. What would your son be like, as it were? Would the son be lighter or darker? That brings me back yes. to this issue. Something Meghan said that really blew up was when she mentioned that, she didn't, she didn't say the name, but that a member of the royal family had raised concerns about how dark yes. her son Archie's skin might be. Mm. How big of an issue is racism still is in the UK at this point in time? Oh, it's still very big. It's still very big. You have a concerted effort, even by government, to try to make sure that there's um, equality, you know, equality of opportunity, things like that. And a lot of things have helped over the years. Sports, you have a lot of um, blacks doing well. Uh, and this is not just Britain now, everywhere, America, everywhere. But over the past few years as well, you've seen that, um, for instance, in the United States with Trump, it sets things back. And you'll see that um, if you look at the press coverage, the UK tabloids are almost totally against um, Meghan. The US is a mixed one. The more conservative one, the pro-Trump ones, are against her. You understand? The more liberal ones are like, no, there must be equality, there must be this and that. So, 
But basically, if you say that, yes, there's still racism, and not just in um, the UK, mm. virtually everywhere, and I'll say that there's still ethnicity here All right. uh, as well. I, I, I want to you know, now ask about Harry. Yes. There's people who have criticized him, um, including Piers Morgan, who's, of course, uh, decided to step <laughs> away from uh, Good Morning Britain. Um, but there's been criticism about the role that he played. Um, some have even gone as petty as saying, you know, how can you do this when you're... Uh, when Prince Philip is um, sick, in you know, in the hospital, um, but you know that's that's you know too little an uh, issue. Um, I do you think that he did wrong in deciding to protect his wife um, at that time, and you know the decisions that they both took to step away from royal responsibilities, move away from the UK entirely. No, um, I don't think he did wrong. I, um, it's easy to judge, you know, we're not there. But I think that um, he could have done better. I think he could have um, protected his family, yet done more to protect his, um, well, he's protected his nuclear family yes. and protected his extended family and the family um, within which he, he was born into. Um, he, he could have done more with that. I, um, I don't want to be attacked, especially by you. I, um, at the, when it all started, I had uh, almost like a typical male view. I was like, this chap, this lady is going to push him because she's coming from a commercial world, she's an actress and everything. She wouldn't want a situation whereby, yes, it's all good, he's a prince, he's a prince, but he's born, he was born to be second to his brother. Now, if you have a woman who is a go-getter and everything, the likelihood is that she'll push her husband to say, no, 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 we can't continue like this. Why must it always be your brother? Why do you always have to walk behind him? Yeah, but, you, you but, but understand? Is, but isn't, isn't it, you know, um, is, it, is it also possible that um, Harry had made his own decisions by himself? That's possible. That's why I said I don't want to be attacked. Yeah. By, well, you know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite possible that he's made his own decisions. It's quite possible that he's the one calling the shots. But you see, the press has skewed it skillfully that we all talk about Mexit, uh, you understand, Brexit, Mexit, and um, it's as if Harry is just a passenger here. But um, uh, the press has made it seem as if she's the dominant um, one in the relationship. And um, unfortunately, that's what it seems like. But um, you would think that were the case because of the things that happened. They went and went to California. Yes. Uh, they were taken in by Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry. You understand? Oprah was at the she was at the wedding, I believe. She's like a friend of theirs and everything. So. Um, okay. So I <laughs> things are really, really not what they seem or what you think. Yes. So I, I wouldn't really go with the narrative that Megan's the one calling the shots exactly. or you know. It could actually be the other way around. Exactly. She could even be the one trying to tell him to, you know, pull the brake. Yes, so I, I, I wouldn't really back, you know, us making assumptions. Mm. But Buckingham Palace has said they will launch a probe into the bullying allegations against Meghan. How far do you expect this to go? I think with what has happened and with the effects that they've seen um, from this interview. I think they'll step down the issue of probing her. Uh, from the press release, I think it's like a white flag. Like, hey, let's... You see, Harry and Meghan have much less to lose than the institution itself. When you say that someone spoke about um, the color of um, the skin of my son, and you don't say who it was. And then you now tell opera off camera that not my grandma or my grandpa. People begin to say, was it your father, Prince Charles? Or was it Prince William, your brother? 
And once you have that hanging there, it will affect the, the public opinion when it comes to their ascending the throne, when the inevitable happens. You understand? So they have much less to lose. So I don't think that they will push. If they push the investigation and the bullying allegations, then it would be that they want to continue the war. But mm -hmm. from what we've seen, I think um, they'll, they want tensions to cool, things to calm down. There. And um, 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 I would, um, there's also, um, I think I saw a YouGov uh, poll yeah. um, that was um, conducted that showed that, you know, there's more people, more UK, UK um, um, citizens who are in support of the, the institution and the, the Naturally. Um, you know, um, the house, um, Buckingham <laughs> Palace, basically. Yes. Um, wh what does that say? No, it's natural, but when you look at it, I think it was 30-something percent or so. That is low. If you had told me that 60% um, of people polled, say, strip them of their titles, we don't want them anymore, you understand. Then I'd say, oh, yes. But they have enough people there who are like, oh. and you see, in any event, you have the Labour Party and quite a few Britons who are questioning, they're beginning to question the value of the monarchy itself. So um, I, I don't think the monarchy can afford uh, another. Don't forget Prince Andrew is waiting in the wings. Yes. Oh. He still hasn't gone to um, sit with the FBI in America over the Jeffrey Epstein yes. um, debacle. So they, they really can't continue to afford all these... Um, Okay, so last question from me. I know that they're, you know, in the public eye, they're the royal family, but others have argued that this is a private affair. It's a family matter. At the heart is family, and they should be allowed to discuss this indoors. Yes. Do you agree with that? No, I agree with that, and that is what will happen. And I think the fact that um, Harry and Meghan um, have said that they have no comments after the, um, the press release from the palace shows that they themselves, I'm sure there are people talking to him, his uncles, his friends, there are pe people talking to him that, look, let's just calm down, you've done your interview and everything. So I think it will gradually um, calm down and... Um, the dust always settles. It will settle the, and hopefully they'll settle things they themselves are slightly naive. You can't say you're withdrawing from the royal family and expect the British taxpayer to keep... Megan admits of that. Yeah. She said she, she yeah. felt she yeah. felt that she was naive. Yeah. She didn't, you know, get exposed to lots of things that she should know yes. before stepping into that family. And, and, and people, of course, you know, have also said, um, you know, she should have known what she was getting into. You know, and you cannot be acting surprised. You know, and that's why I said um, 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 Harry yeah. probably didn't yeah. um, handle everything properly. Yeah. Well, you have told um, her that, look, I'm the second fiddle here. I don't have much money. I have wealth. <laughs> I may not have much cash. You know, there's a difference between having cash and being wealthy. Well, but there's, there's, yeah. there's also a possibility that he had explained all of that, you know, but it didn't in any way well, change. Yeah, right. It didn't in yeah. any way change the British media and the tabloids and the, exactly. the their reaction towards Meghan. Exactly. Um, yeah. That has been, of course, alleged to, to be completely racist. Mm. Um, there's also a narrative that the Queen, Prince Philip, and everyone seems to be trapped in the institution, and there's not much <laughs> that they can do or say yes. to protect Harry and Meghan. Do you, do you think that's possible? It is um, because um, the Queen herself is, she's a trustee, as it were, because you're born, you inherit, you become king or queen, but those coming behind, as of birth, uh, with, with uh, having been born, have a right that you might not be able to determine. It's a constitutional right. Harry is sixth in line. 
William is third in line. No one can change that. Yes. You understand? So they're also trapped, as you say, because they're norms. When the Queen started, when they started out, when Prince Philip came on board, when they got married, there are many things that they disagreed with. But the institution was there. And of course, the old man was prime minister there. Then, Prince um, Winston Churchill. And he kept saying, no, 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 ma'am, you can't. You can't. You have to do this. The Queen never wanted to live in Buckingham Palace. It was Winston Churchill that said, no, 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 you have to. This is the best that we have. We must showcase the palace to the world. She would rather stay in the countryside. Do you, do you think that the um, UK um, tabloids, the media, will learn anything from all of this? No, no, no. no. Um, they, they, they've been, they've been um, over time, and maybe this is maybe you know, the, the, the biggest of recent times mm. um, that they've been alleged to be completely racist. Um, during Princess Diana also, they, there wasn't necessarily racism allegations, but they yeah. spoke about how vicious they are. Yeah. Raheem Sterling has also you know, suffered a little bit of, you know, well, there's no little bit, has yeah. also suffered yeah. you know, the same people, racism. Yeah. So do you think that they will learn anything from this? Or is this all about um, ratings and selling stories and, and the likes? Unfortunately, it's mostly about ratings and um, selling what you want to sell. And the media is still very, very much um, dominated by um, non-blacks or whites and what have you, especially in the UK. So their prejudices will filter into what they do. It's a, it's a, and I, I doubt if they'll learn. They'll learn. They've improved. Even with the royal family, they've improved. But then you'll still have that problem. Um, also, quickly, we, I don't think we should leave without talking about Piers Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, I, if you can dish it out, you should be able to take, take it. it. That's it. Piers is, um, he went on too, way too much. Um, I've, I, I'm a follower of his on Twitter, and he just went on and on. And um, only recently did I realize that he had personal history yes. with Meghan, and he just kept going on and on. And so, and walking off the set was totally unprofessional. Okay, so let, let's bring it down here to Nigeria. Um, you earlier had made a statement. Um, I'm not sure if it was off camera or you know where we started. Um, um, I want I want you to you know address it as you know a Nigerian now. Um, how much protection should a man give his wife from his family? Uh, if we find situations where they are you know either against a tribe or her religion, or, you know, she's Osu, so they don't marry from these parts of, <laughs> of Nigeria, or they, those villages, those things, you know, come in every now and then. How much protection should a Nigerian man give his wife? 100%, I think. 100% protection. Um, at the same time, you keep, if you need to educate her as to why your family believes in this, or does this, or that, you keep doing that as well. I think um, what we need to do as family men or as men is to bring and take um, our wives and children along, carry them along in, re in regards to how you relate to the extended family. Yes. Uh, family in the cultural set setting, family is very, very um, important. We always say it in the African setting. The Yorubas will say, the family, the, 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 the cord that binds the family together is very, very important and long. And so every man should do his very best to make sure that um, his family, his immediate family, thrive, that his wife, his kids thrive within the context of the bigger or wider family. And, and, and when he's, he struggles with that, what next? <laughs> I mean, because yeah, I mean, I'm, to... I'm trying to paint, you know, situations that we see here in Nigeria. Um, yeah. When the, the mother just doesn't like her, when they say she's... Yeah, you know, at, the, at the end of the day, you, you, have to, you have to weigh things and decide. I won't just say, you, you know, some will say, well, it's my wife, definitely. My mother's a witch. She's this, she's that, you know, but... Um, and then some will say, ah, you're talking to my mother like that? Yes. But you have to weigh things and see what is best in the best interest, 
yourself, your wife, your family, your children, especially the children, what is best for them in the long run? Well, I hope um, well, uh, Nigerian men, you want to throw in something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping, you know, that, you know, we can learn a lot from this, you know, because the, the arguments online are in, you know, numerous directions. There's people yeah. who, you know, argue that, um, you know, Prince Harry, you know, has been strong-headed, you know, and shouldn't have gone all the way and thrown away all the things he could benefit from the royal, fa royal family. Yeah. And there's those, of course, who... No, you know, well, if a that. person throws that away, then you see that he has... Um, he, he knows what he wants to do, and he's doing it. Uh, he feels that he wants to protect his wife and his child, or the other one is on the way now, his children. And um, if he's willing to forego the royal life for that, then he must be respected for his um, convictions. Um, whether or not we think his decision is right or wrong, he has his convictions and he's, he's done well to stick by um, his wife and his um, son. All right, so in the spirit of reconciliation, let's say everything you know, goes on well and you know, the family is making up. Is there a possibility that he can rejoin the royal family? Oh, he hasn't left the royal family. It's his family no, by blood. I mean the public service. That's he, I doubt it. If you've signed um, an agreement with Netflix, you've signed an agreement, you understand he's gone commercial. And they're making money. I think he gave a speech. Um, he gets paid for talks now. And yes. I think it was like a million dollars, roughly, that he made from one speech. Who would go back to receiving 20,000 pounds from his father when he can make that sort of money? So I doubt it. He, what he misses, I think, are the military titles. He was really a military person. And, um, but we'll see which way it will go, how they'll balance things up. But I think they will. They'll find a way to um, balance things up. But I doubt if the establishment will ever forgive Meghan. They mm. probably will not. Then, of course, um, one of the you know highlights of the conversation with Piers Morgan before he eventually um, stepped out was um, when he was speaking with um, Shola. I don't remember oh, the Nigerian now. lady. Yes, the yes. Nigerian lady, where she said you know she was disappointed with uh, the Queen, who of, um, and she said you know she was asking what kind of grandmother would watch you know their grandchild you know go through all of that. Um, do you think that the the you know um, Buckingham Palace itself? should be able to have better control over the press? Well, they cannot control the press, but um, they can better control their interaction with the press. And they've done that. After the unfortunate incident of Diana's death, uh, they had meetings with the press, and um, they've given them some more space. But the press will keep telling you that you, your family, but at the same time, the taxpayers um, pay for you. They keep you. And so they have a right to know what is going on. So um, it's, it's a balancing act. And I think with this as well, um, lessons would have been learned. And um, we will see that they'll gradually steps will be taken as well. Yeah, and, and, and maybe if they had uh, made statements earlier exactly. in their defense, it yes. probably would have you know, reduced the amount of energy that the press was putting into that story. And so, you know, you, you really, I don't know if you still can argue that they didn't support the things that the press was doing at that time. Yeah, you see, if you have an institution and uh, the institution is so, the queen... Um, has so many things under her. And if you do not have automatic access to grandma or even to mommy, <laughs> you understand? You have to go through people that, I want yes. to see my mom. May I see my mom tomorrow? And say, no, you can't, sir. Come in two, three days' time. Then it becomes more difficult. Um, and so that being... Um, in a jacket, as it were, even the Queen um, has problems based on the institution itself. And then definitely, if they had taken steps earlier, and that's what we said at the beginning, if they had taken steps earlier, there's no way it would have gotten to this stage. 
they would have been able to um, nip things in the bud. But to your question, it is possible that certain people from within the institution, they're like civil servants. You know, they're like civil servants, these men in dark suits, as they call them. Mm -hmm. they, they may be there and may not like the fact that, oh, why would he, why would the queen allow him to marry a woman of mixed race? You understand? So certain people within the system may not like it and may be willing to leak one or two things to the press or turn the other eye and or decide not to call in a favor because most times, the editors will phone in and say, we're running a story tomorrow on so, so, so. I say, please step it down. So what do, how do you think this might impact, you know, the future of the royal family regarding maybe when Archie's all grown up or another <laughs> member of the family and they want to marry somebody outside, you know, maybe someone of mixed race like Megan. How do you think this might impact that relationship in the future? If Archie meets my daughter somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. And they fall in um, love. Yes. Um, I don't know, actually. I think that it cannot but, um, this incident, incident cannot but um, get things more liberal. They will begin to understand that um, the world is a global village where these kids mix wherever they go to. They probably will go to university. In those days, they were homeschooled. I think Prince Charles was the first to go to public, to public school. They were homeschooled, so they controlled those they mixed with. But now, they go to school, they, from primary school, secondary school, university, so they mix with people, they have their classmates and everything. It's difficult to um, control those who they're going to mix with. And with this, I'm sure that um, it's only going to become slightly more liberal. There will be a lot of people, conservatives, fighting to make sure that it remains a conservative institution and that you don't have um, funny, funny, in quotes, funny bloodlines yes. mixing in. But um, with time, it will, it will open up, I think. And they have to keep innovating and evolving to stay relevant. That is the key for the queen. I think that's the key. She has, or whomsoever is the um, sovereign, they have to make sure that the monarchy at each stage, at each given, within each given epoch, is relevant to the British people and to the Commonwealth. If that fails, then no one needs a monarchy anymore. Well, that would be an interesting time to see. But, um, Lady Paul Johnson, uh, Johnson, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you we'll for coming on. Yes. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, of course, uh, we're still going to be talking about the United Kingdom next. But this time, we're talking about £4.2 million, which has been uh, sent back to Nigeria as part of an agreement signed by both nations to repatriate uh, funds stolen from Nigeria. The latest amount is uh, money reportedly stolen by former governor of Delta State, James Ibori, while he was governor. The money will be used to fund the construction of the second Niger Bridge, the Kano Abuja Expressway and the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Um, let's uh, quickly listen to the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Katrina Oliang. This first trash of mon tranche of money is £4.2 million, and this has been recovered from the friends and family of a certain former governor of Delta State, known to all, Mr. James Ibori. He was trusted by the people of Delta State to be their governor for two terms. Sadly, he did not deliver on his mandate. He stole money, money that should have been used for roads, for hospitals, and for other developmental purposes. The UK has been working really closely with the federal government of Nigeria to return this money, and I'm so pleased that this money will help to fund three infrastructure projects which will directly benefit the citizens of Nigeria. So the first is the Lagos to Ibadan Expressway, the second is the Abuja to Kano Road, and the third is the Niger Bridge. This but some legal experts say the money should go straight to the Delta state government. We were supposed to have constitutional lawyer GT Ogie here this morning, but he had to attend to an emergency. We'll take a break here and we'll be right back.